that time again to spend another 30 minutes with Skip E. Lowe and his talented guests. On the distaff side, we have an actress who, despite her numerous roles in the various entertainment media, has her initials etched indelibly on the role of Anne Frank, which she created for the original Broadway production. And there is a curious irony to this. Anne Frank died in a Nazi concentration camp, and the actress who brought it to life on the stage bears the initials SS. I refer to the charming Susan Strasberg. Our other guest's initials readily bring to mind a military policeman or member of parliament. However, in his many roles as rebellious and anti-establishment young men, he has often found himself running afoul of the law. For that matter, he even broke a law as the father of us all. I speak of none other than Michael Parks. And now, here's your man of the half hour, who, as a talk show host, recently asked his doctor to inoculate him against foot and mouth disease, the inimitable Skip E. Lowe. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Looking at Hollywood. We have a very, very Hollywood show for you today. I want you to sit back and relax because I want you to meet one of America's great actresses, Miss Susan Strasberg. How are you, darling? Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. from what you said, I guess I'm Hollywood. <laughs> you are Hollywood in New York. But you do live in Hollywood now, don't you? I've lived in Hollywood uh, or in California on and off really for about 25 years. So, I think I'm the oldest new face in town. <laughs> What's new and exciting in Susan Strasberg's life right now? Well, I don't know that it's so new. I'm in the process of completing a novel, my first novel, uh -huh. for Putnam's. It's taken me about three years. I think it's probably the most challenging and difficult thing that I've ever done, but I love it. It's, uh -huh. it's not, a, not a Romana clay. It's uh -huh. not about uh -huh. me. Um, well, it's not about you. Then. No, no, so it's not. A well, you know, in the sense that, let's say, when you play a part, it's not you, but all the part. I get to be uh -huh. the villain. I, I'm uh -huh. all the men in this book, all the women. I'm, I guess, uh, obviously, Henry Miller said before he died that he thought that all fiction in the future was going to be thinly disguised autobiography. Uh -huh. So, to some extent, I mean, it's about an actress. Now, the fact that she's tall, blonde, blue-eyed, and Catholic, <laughs> I hope will take it far enough away from me that uh, I uh -huh. have a friend, Rona Jaffe, who said, well, the minute you make her tall and blonde, everyone's going to think it's you anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it's a composite of people that I have known living and dead. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there are feelings, the, the thoughts, feelings, uh, some of the experiences are mine, but it's not my story. It right. is an invented story, and that's hard. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because when you, it's like being God, you suddenly have this complete freedom mm -hmm. to do anything you want to, mm -hmm. except that it has to make sense. It has to be a life. Yes, yes. It was much easier doing my own because you know how it's going to turn out. I mean, uh -huh. when I wrote the book, I knew I lived, I knew I had Jennifer, my daughter, mm -hmm. I knew I got a divorce. There are certain mm -hmm. things that were givens in the beginning. Yes. This is, it's exciting. It's a little lonely because I'm used to as an actress relating to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I talk on paper instead of like this. How long have you been doing this? How long is, uh, you're, you're almost finished? Well, I'm between <laughs> start and finish. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. I would, l I'm planning to finish by the end of the year. I and see. I wrote something else also recently. I wrote a foreword for, uh, my first foreword for <laughs> a book called uh, Strasberg's Method by Laurie Hull. Uh -huh. It's a woman who taught from my father for mm -hmm. about 12 years, and it's mm -hmm. the exercise work, uh -huh, which uh -huh. no one has been able to get down mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, coming out next month. Uh -huh. so. Susan, tell me something. You've got to clear it Tell you something? Me. Yes. <laughs> Depends. Depends. Well, St Strasburg has an actor studio. It's called Actor Studio and Actors Institute here in Hollywood. Now, there's a difference uh -huh. between the Institute and the Actors Studio. No, my father was the artistic director for what 30 years right. of the actor's studio which mm -hmm. is a non-profit right studio uh in which you audition to get in mm -hmm. you don't, don't pay. pay right um and i believe it's a what do you call it a tax uh you know tax free organization that's mm -hmm. right and the institute it was my father's private acting classes which for which you you went and uh -huh. maybe it had an interview mm -hmm. and he took you into and class in. and the work was very different because it's different, you say? Well, yes, it's different. See, in, in the studio, the actor studio, for instance, people came having studied from all different places, some of them right. never having studied. Right. So you right. had kind of a hodgepodge of, of ways of working, of people from different backgrounds. Uh -huh. A lot of people who have been in the studio, let's say, for 20 or 30 years, still may not know 
some of the work. Mm -hmm. It's not like a school where you have to do certain things. When you right. go to a school, you kind of start at A, go uh -huh. to B, to C, uh -huh. to D, to E. In the studio, you came in and worked on yourself, but uh -huh. there are still people who, um, you know, you could still, I don't mean even an argument, but there's, there's yeah. such a, mm -hmm. a kind of uh, diversity of, yes. of ways of working in the, the institute studio. institute is in Hollywood, though. Yes. Uh, there's one in Hollywood and one in New York. Oh, there is one in mm -hmm. New York. I didn't know that. There mm -hmm. is one in New York. And mm -hmm. your mother, um, your mother started, she's... My mother, mother no, my mother, mother has and, passed away 19 sure. years ago. My mother, Paula, right. who did teach also, but my stepmother, stepmother. runs the schools now. That's right, right. Here in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I see. Tell me something about Richard Burton. <laughs> well, Was he the love of your life? Um, I mean... Well, you know, you it's just so funny when you, you know, I, I've talked about uh, obviously a lot of these things so much because of my, um, of the first book that I wrote, Bittersweet. Yeah. Um, but once you write something, it's just not so, it's, it's as if, it, I don't mean that it's cathartic, but it's kind of over and done with. The thing that is funny to me is that I was on a show like this, but with an audience uh -huh. and talking about the book. Uh -huh. And I had been talking about Burton, and I guess it's a kind of very dramatic part of the book, where uh -huh. how I was suicidal and how despondent I was. Yes. And I almost threw myself off Waterloo Bridge, but I had a new mink coat on that <laughs> I had just bought, and I thought, well, I don't mind dying, but I don't want to ruin the coat. Uh -huh. And a woman in the audience raised her hand and said, oh, Miss Strasberg, I just have to tell you how much I envy you, uh -huh. your relationship with Richard Burton. And I said, but weren't you listening to me? I just finished describing that I, I was suicidal. It was one of the most unhappy mm -hmm, times mm -hmm, of my life. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, better to be miserable over Richard Burton than over my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> I see. Anyway, you're... He was, a, he was a wonderful actor. He was. And there aren't many actors like him. He had enormous uh, temperament. He did. And... If you, you look now, there are nice actors, uh, there are good actors, but very few, particularly on stage, who have that kind of... Uh, somebody once said about, I, oh God, about the great English actor, they have whose have name that. I can't remember, they said, he illuminated Shakespeare with flashes of lightning. Uh -huh. uh, Richard, when he was good, had that kind of temperament that he could illuminate uh -huh. things. Uh, and, see, I think, I think that a lot of actors... It's funny, my father used to try and differentiate between uh -huh. naturalism and realism. If you look at television, people are very natural nowadays, uh -huh. but they're not real. Real. That's and it. because reality is the essence of life, so mm -hmm. that it's fuller, it's mm -hmm. more, it's uglier, more beautiful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, natural is I can go stand on the street corner and watch people be natural, and yes. somehow it seems to me there was a confusion with that. And, in, well, I don't know whether that came about because of the whole method and, uh -huh. and misunderstanding of, of what that meant, but so that actors, let's say, like, well, Pacino has it too on stage. Uh, Brando. Uh, Brando, who, ha who, you know, can, you think they're, uh -huh. they're real, they're natural, but they, they, they come up with these flashes, yeah. which is, they have a kind of danger. You never know what they're going to they're do. They're going to take chances. Yeah. They take I, chances. I, and yeah. also they take a risk and they dare to be terrible. That's it. That's that. I just want to be I saw good. A singer <laughs> I saw a singer last night did the same thing on Who? stage. Uh, some singer here in Hollywood, he did the same thing. I was surprised. Some singer has just killed just himself. You think he's wonderful, you can't remember his name. <laughs> yes, his, uh, his name is Ellen, and he's just wonderful. Mark Ellen, he's mm -hmm. just wonderful. He took chances on that stage last well, night, and you know, that's what I like about performers. They take chances. Well, it's... Yeah. You, it's, it's... Your way. father is method, right? I mean, it's really method, isn't it? Mm, isn't I don't know about really method. There is no the method, quote, the yeah. method that doesn't exist. It's, in other words, um, the, he taught techniques that he had gotten from Stanislavski and right. Tongov. Mm -hmm. He, I think it's impossible to... You, you know, the thing is, I remember he used to say to me, uh, don't, you never borrow anything, steal it outright and make it your own. He made his own contribution uh -huh. to that work. But none of the work was for everyone. In other words, there were exercises that I never did yes, because yes. I didn't need to do them. So it's a little bit like if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, it is a way of work and as, let's say, differentiated from 
English acting, yes. which probably tends to go from the outside in. American acting would go from the inside out, but mm -hmm. I think it's the, the method, yes, yes. whatever that is, right, which right. we won't go whatever into, we but say, right. has influenced the, the younger generation of English actors, because I remember English? being chased you say down, English of English act actors. Peter O'Toole chased my father down the street, oh God, it must be 25 years ago in England. We thought somebody was coming to mug us. This was before muggers, uh -huh, but, uh -huh. and it was O'Toole who had read something about the method and uh -huh. wanted to say, Albert uh -huh. Finney, all those actors uh -huh. have, they have both, but uh -huh. they were fascinated and it made, I think, a, a huge difference to that generation that came, the angry young men, uh, John Osborne, all those plays that started coming Angry out of young men, you're saying. You were married to a, an angry young man, weren't you? Christopher Jones. Well, I think probably Was every, he angry? I would suspect that almost every young man is angry at some point. I think <laughs> maybe it goes with the territory of adolescence. But where's Christopher Jones? What's happening with his life right now, Susan? Well, you know Christopher, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. But he's in Hollywood. But, I mean, do you see him? Uh, I see him not that uh, frequently, but we have a child, Jennifer, so right. and um, so we see one another. Uh, I think he, you know, he's a wonderful painter. Yes. And I know he's doing a lot of painting, uh -huh. which I think he could mm -hmm. do professionally if he wanted to. He really he's is. Very artist, yes. he's, he's very artistic. He's very artistic. I don't know whether he wants to act or not. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, hasn't that feeling anymore. He just lays back slowly, and that's it. He's dying here in Hollywood. Just wants to paint. That's what, like That's you're right. saying. But you know mm -hmm. something? I have one of another Hollywood great actors I want you to meet. Now, you probably worked with him in a film. Mm -hmm. What film was it? I, you do remember? Michael Parks? I don't remember the name of the film. That was an overacting teenage sweat gland. <laughs> well, he is... I, I remember I wore a blonde wig. Thing I it was terrible. The only thing I can think about Michael Parks, he is the mysterious, mysterious man of Hollywood. Let's bring him on. Michael Parks, how are you? The mystique of Michael Parks. Yeah, Michael, you should come on with Why? a mask and then Why drop are your you mask so mysterious to the camera. Or in Hollywood, Michael? Everyone... I probably because I don't talk that much. You don't talk, I think. Well, he must know a lot. People don't talk. Don't you know. talk. They also think you're very intelligent. That's usually. it. Yeah. <laughs> you can Michael. do line readings. <laughs> yes. Michael, you are writing now, too. Yeah. Doing we don't so want to get into that, do we? I, no, I have to we don't have to get into said. that, no. But when... it does get very lonely at times, and I agree with you about Brando. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, he does light up the stage. He does. The oh, yes. yes. No is, he, is he one of your and favorite so, actors? And so did Richard. I worked with Richard. You did? What did you and work for? Let's uh, see. What was it called? We shot it uh, 1979. It was Bob Mitchum, Burton, myself, Rod Steiger, Kurt Jurgens. Good cast. Uh huh. Great. And he was funny. What I loved about him. Yes. The uh -huh. reason I've I've been called an angry young man. You got an angry young man thing. And the reason why you're called that is because they give you 97 roles, where you steal hubcaps and I see. shoot at the police and. That's right. I mean, not... People confuse, tend to confuse the actor with the part. With yeah. the part. Then came Bronson was your television series in 19... Yeah, but he wasn't angry at all. He wasn't. Finally got a chance mm -hmm. to show people that I was nice. And, uh -huh. and but but you've lady. done classical work, haven't you? I know you've done theater work. Uh, I have a 50 plays. You yeah, have, you're so. a theater actor. Yeah, I'm huh? 53. Don't go Before you did your series. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. And what was your first film, Michael? Before. What was your first motion picture? Do you remember your uh, first motion first picture? First motion Wild Sea. It was a black and white film. Um, See, that's ah. how you get a reputation. The so he's the Wild Sea. That's in 1964, <laughs> wasn't it, Michael? Something like that? 63. 63? Yeah. I was living in Europe at that time, yeah. I 23 remember. days, 256,000. Uh-huh. Who was in that, Michael? Who the Wild you? Seed. Do you George remember? Bernard Shaw said something that's so true. The equivalent today would probably be a uh, million dollars. But he said, if you would keep the non-educational film, that's what we do, mm -hmm. uh -huh. below $25,000, right? because it was 1924, mm -hmm. you would soon discover you had an art. That's ah. true. Hmm. I see. Yeah. But I do miss the flowers. You, you just picked these, didn't you? You didn't really buy any. No, we just oh. picked them, Michael. Budget. On Norton Street. Something Michael, tell me something. Budget here? Yeah. Michael, tell me something. And this is water. Did you study yeah. with Lee Strasberg? No. Did you know him? Did yeah. You? Did you? Sweet man. Uh, uh -huh. I met him through Jennifer Jones, and uh, he said to come and audit one day. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I went by the class, and it was awful because uh, <laughs> Gabe Dell was there. <laughs> it's nothing you personal know, about Gabe. Oh, I love Gabe. No, he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> right. It was awful. It was awful. Uh -huh. You have to be serious. I didn't want to make fun of anyone. Right. And I'm sitting in these bleachers, and Gabe gets up, and Rip Torn is doing a thing from Richard III, and he's walking in. He says, now's one of our discontent made 
glorious summer yeah. in sunny York. He didn't know what he was doing. And Gabe walks around behind me, bleaches him a little coffee once, he makes a little coffee behind the bleachers, remember? And he's, and he's standing now, he's standing about uh, head level with me back then. And he says, uh, Richard the Toyd. He said, look at it. It's going to be 50 years before he learns how to talk. <laughs> so he's, look, he's wearing duck boots and a mackinac. And he was. <laughs> Rip had just come in from the country and he was wearing duck boots. And I started to laugh. I had to bite my lip and I got up and went down. Coffee, got a cup of coffee and, and, and uh, walked away away from it. But better it to be able to do that in a private room, then a lot of people have to get up and do that on stage, make those. It's kind of nice to have no, a place to make that. mistakes. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Gabe's sense, like. yeah. sense of humor is wonderful. Bus Riley back Monty in town. Monty clipped about the actor's studio, I love. Monty? Yeah, he was drunk. And he came, and one evening they asked him to come by, and he came. And finally he stood up at drunk. Yeah. He said, I'm not a method actor, I'm a Baptist, and left. <laughs> he was drunk. He did a John Barrymore Jr. act. I love it. <laughs> Tell me about Bus I'm not a method actor, back I'm in a town. Baptist. What's a, a, Anne Margaret's? That was your second film, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, the second film. That was, that's not a, a, a fun subject to talk about, actually. I'll make it very brief. Yes, we go ahead. wrote it, and we shot it, and then they didn't like it, and the image was too bad for Anne Margaret because they had a contract mm. with her for four pictures, and she I looked see. like the town tar, which she was supposed to look like. I see. So they said it was bad. She might be doing dancing in the streets next with oh, lilies in her hair. Mm. So they so they rewrote and we mm. had to reshoot and they, they ruined the picture. And she took his name off. Oh, I and see. He know. did. Yeah. They actually sent me changes. Uh-huh. And told me that told me there were bills. Well, Universal. If you don't want to talk about that, let's talk about the Bible. You were the first one who did a nude scene. Didn't you do a nude scene in that? Well, PG. Well, it Stormy was weather used to be dancing. I remember the Bible had fig leaves. <laughs> yes, fig leaves. Yes. Tell I mean, me I about the Bible, seen. Michael. Oh, John Houston. What kind of a... Oh. John. John Houston. Tell me about that, man. Well, John's a uh, Machiavellian soul. He could be very, very cruel. He could be very cruel. Did you read uh, White Hunter, Black Heart? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I haven't. Peter Vertel. Yes, yes yeah. right. Peter Vertel. Old yeah. man, yeah. Yeah. Then you'll know about John. John. I don't want to spend a lot of time with John, but John's uh, um, can be sadistic. Uh, he can be awful. He can be yeah, sadistic. Yeah, you don't see it. Women don't see it. Women love it. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what we did. <laughs> we brought from Brazil, mind you, <laughs> 4,000 cranes. Aren't they lovely, my dear? <laughs> so they, uh, the women leave. Oh, God, it was so uh -huh. lovely. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But in the meantime, he's saying, swim across. They're not going to get you. <laughs> Just two crocs and a female. <laughs> You can't, you, that was, you can't really love John. <laughs> I turned down two pictures with did him. Did you after really? That. Yeah, after that picture, yeah. He had a great sense of humor, though, didn't I he? Oh, you after. did. You like to pull also. leeches off your ass. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. I mean, he's, he can. It'll be real, Bogey. Don't worry about reality. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't really think I should get it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Bogey. Go on, it's real, you see. We'll, we'll really see it. Bullshit. I like he's to put wonderful. rubber leeches. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Put rubber That's leeches right. on me. Yes. You yes, get yes. paid to make, to make leeches. Yes. The snake, yes. the snake was yes. about longer than I've been away from home in the Bible. The snake. Uh -huh. She come running through the bushes, Ula. And she's. Oh! And my turn, I look off and she's. I said, What's the matter, Ula? And she's running. Oh! Have you seen the serpent? <laughs> so I said, I'm not working with it. He said, What? And I said, No. So I convinced him to use this. Ballet dancer from in the Italian company uh -huh. to do the snake, and we painted like a snake, and uh -huh. it was wonderful. Papino Tuna said, "Beautiful, beautiful," because he had all the colors <laughs> dancing off him. So he had a, a ballet dancer. Uh -huh. I said, "I'm not working with that." Uh, <laughs> nor the tiger. Uh -huh. Oh no, he's, a, he's cruel. Good way to die. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Jennifer Jones, Michael Parks, sweet Elmi. lady, sweet lady, isn't she? Yeah, lovely lady. The yeah. Idol. Was that filmed in England? Yeah, it was. it was. Tell me about that movie. Mishap. Uh, I went over to do it with uh, Kim Stanley and I went over to do it. Kim Stanley? Went was over on the boat. And, love her. And uh, Kim gained about 42 pounds and 28 zits. I used to put her to bed every night drinking. And uh, my favorite actress. Not anymore. No, She's I know that. Drinking. I know that. That's, yeah, you right. want that story? Yeah. Now we yep. go, Kim yep. Stanley's Stanley. perfect. But then, yep. I wasn't perfect either. But uh, You did drink, Michael. What do you mean, did? Still do. Anyway, <laughs> so they want to they want to fire and and uh, not pay her anything. I said, "Well, if fire me, then I'll quit too." So they said, "Okay, no, we won't. Just I said, be nice, be nice to her." So then I, somebody came in, uh, mentioned three names, and I said, "No, 
not her, I think her. And they, we all happen to agree on that, Jennifer. Yeah. Worked again. Mm. I don't think she'd worked since uh, the king died. Mm -hmm. You know, they forget about the queen sometimes. Yes. There's a prince to take over. And she had that white elephant up on the hill, and uh, nobody would use her. Oh. She's a wonderful lady. Beautiful lady. It's special. Very special. What? She's a special lady. Jennifer yeah, she's Jones come through is a lot. marvelous yes. lady. Yes, yes, she is. And I've she loved She does things for the work. mento, doesn't she, right now? She's, uh, she helps the mental. Uh, she's in a campaign of mental and health. Oh, she does a lot of things. She's, she's marvelous. Marvelous. She won't, you know, the, that Kobe thing. Hmm. That, Married to uh, Norton Simon. Married to Norton getting? Simon, you gotta be half secretary. Yeah. Robert Standrick was up for, I mean, for Kobe. She's gonna be doing the Kobe. Mm -hmm. That was Jennifer Jones. They asked, asked her to do the part, and she refused to do it. Because she doesn't want to do TV appearances mm -hmm. anymore. Stranger on the Run. That First two-hour movie ever made for television. Was it really? Yeah. That was for Wasserman, held him off, and said, uh, got more money out of the sponsors. That was really what it was. Mm -hmm. You start. worked together, you two. Yeah, yeah, we did. What film With John you? Newland, a wonderful man who loves Susan, dear. <laughs> really. <laughs> Wait, Susan, what movie was it? Yeah. You know, I got along with him. It uh -huh. was... I did. I... Did not get. <laughs> See, I blocked him. Out. He's in the outside. He's in this t truck outside with his tape. I he don't can't be inside. So he's talking to us on his uh -huh. microphone and said, yes. "Oh, you uh -huh. remember every bit of it." I, I was thinking, don't remember. You remember every bit memory. of it. <laughs> so, Jim, if you'll just, why don't you do like Michael does? He, he just doesn't see anything. You have to talk about it. So, oh, that's up. right. We were. What did you I think, didn't realize Isaac? that the mic was plugged into his ear and we uh -huh. were talking really? in between. Well, Back it was forth. not. A, let me put it this well, way. Well, John, I believe she's the, the, the interior. There's an interior motivation, the and then there's a, there's a no, on no, top we, of we this were, we have we a relationship. Were gossiping. That... We weren't talking about that. Well, let me put it this way: the movie was not that interesting. Oh, what uh, saved me was that we were having very interesting conversations yeah, in yeah, between, sure. and I didn't realize it was all going into his ear. Uh -huh. oh, part but of that, it was uh, a, one of the more forgettable things that I've done, and I've done a few of them. I guess we all have those, you know. Susan Strasberg. Like theater. Home. Theater. Let's get back to the theater. Yes. That's your first love, isn't it? Oh, no. we're just getting it dirty. It isn't? No. Ah, <laughs> Susan Strasberg. No. It is not your first love. <laughs> Michael, I heard you. <laughs> we were just getting real dirty. I hear you, Michael. I did that rotten piece of crap because I couldn't pay the rent. I was it. And the agent oh, said, listen, okay. if you come back, if you do these, if you'll just do about eight or ten of these awful things, he said, uh -huh. you know, for $250, uh -huh. they'll see that you're not a problem anymore. Now, when you don't think you really were a problem, you say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm okay. I'm so for 12 years, I didn't read a script. I did not read a script. For 12 years? For 12 years straight, I did not, and you know this. You didn't do anything? Did not read a script. No, I didn't read a script. No, he you just, didn't he read did script. it. Oh, show up in, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Bum jump, Wyoming. Why? And read at the coffee shop and start the next morning. Oh. Have you ever done that, Chris? Uh, That's uh, hard Susan? to do. I defy, uh, I defy oh, I, any good actor to do that. To do well, that. if yeah, you've been right. if you've been working for thirty years, which I have, there are years when you pay the rent, and there are years when you can be a little uh, more artistic. But my favorite story about that is Catherine Ross and Vera Miles. I've always loved Vera Miles because of this. She did the Hell great Fighters? Actress, great actress. And the story is that Catherine Ross was upset with the studio <clears throat> because she thought she was too good for that kind of film. She had just done. Uh, Butch no, Cassidy. No, no, the one before that, the graduate. graduate. So they got to, Eng Universal made Vera and Catherine go to, uh, to England to publicize the picture. And apparently Catherine said some not very nice things. Vera gets off the plane and they say, Miss Miles, um, what, do you have any comment? Catherine Ross says this is the worst piece of mm -hmm. crap she's ever done. <laughs> Vera Miles said, well, it's not the worst piece of crap I've ever done. <laughs> Every what up, now, what up? Every now and then I, I remember yeah, yeah. that. Lee Marvin paid the best compliment to me I ever had. Uh -huh. He said to me one night in a bar, having a lot of fun, he went... And he, when he, sometimes he goes into hand gestures. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, when, when, when he's drinking. When he forgets when he's the drinking. word. When he forgets, yeah. When, oh, okay. But he's fine now. He's fine now. He is? <laughs> anyway, you go like this. Everybody's an A.A. Tell the book. Tell the book. book I'm winning. He said, I've loved you and all your junk. <laughs> That's the best compliment I've ever had. It was, it was. That is. Well, I'm no subtle, you're really that's wonderful. Lovely. You don't get good enough lovely. parts. That, that is uh -huh. great that's true. I, I laughed so hard, too. I, I laughed so hard. Kim brother, Stanley, brother. tell me about you two. You know Kim Stanley Bob. Tell me about her. I love her. Oh, she's, she's a great. Why? She's one of the great American Raw actors. nerve. I don't know Kim personally. I, have, I, I haven't worked with her. I saw her on stage in uh -huh. the early days, and I don't... I think she and Jerry Page certainly are the finest, the finest actresses yeah, that right. I've seen. But... I, I don't really know yeah. Kim. He knows her, yeah. so he can... Went through a devastating uh, loss of, of a husband. She did. Hurt her badly, yeah. Yeah. 
for a long time. Really. That's what made her dream. Really was yeah. in love. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. I don't know. That's she teaches right. acting here in Hearts Hollywood. She's break. wonderful. People tend to Boy, think yeah. She's right, just you know. a wonderful lady. I just love her. And she's she goes to AA now and she's on the meetings and she doesn't drink. She's wonderful. And well, I you know what I think. I'll tell you one time I was today. at a, I was at a half of Hollywood terrific. is. Which yes, is it is great. I think that is great. It was the twentieth yes, one right. time, not too long ago. And it was when when uh, Alanette Jr. and, and uh, Jay Cannon were over there. And there's a guy came up complaining about the drinker on the picture, the drunk. And he was talking about a certain actor. Lee Marvin, right? I said, well, you know what, you guys, you make all those millions of dollars off of them. Uh -huh. Every year, you know, make millions of dollars over the years in pictures of them. If I were you, I'd find out what the hell he's drinking and send him a case. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. If you can do it, as long as you can do it, Burton, for one, as you uh -huh. well know, Richard would be having his cops and then he's, and they say, we, we need to do another shot. Uh -huh. Boom. He was better when he wasn't drinking. Well, yes, he, but was, he could he get was, it. He could, he could get Amazing. a facsimile of it, but I think particularly uh, yeah. on camera, it hurt him more than somehow because the distance yeah. on stage, somehow the stage could take the, yes. the excesses. Excess but, on stage. Uh, except that what you would see when he wasn't drinking was the terror. Yes. yes. Was the, the feeling and the terror that he, because maybe the way of work that he did didn't allow for that, so he didn't know what to do with it. Yes. And you have to put it somewhere. In other words, if you think about it, that you're constantly, as an actor, calling up ghosts and demons. And yes. there's a story that I think is, is about actors, too. It was a, that uh, a little boy was looking at a man who was hitting a stone in, like, Renaissance time. And he said, Senor, why are you hitting that stone? And Michelangelo said, because there's an angel inside that wants to come out. Well, actors are constantly chipping away at themselves to bring out all these angels and demons. Well, when you bring them up, what do you do with them? Then they're there. You've conjured them up. It's not so easy to rub the magic lantern and say, back inside. Like, I'm not a computer. Yes. Don't come back until the yes. next part. Yes. So, Susan, you know, the time has gone up, Michael. God, you guys are a great guest. Really, one of my best. A great I'm guest. Me. <laughs> great. Vaccinated with a phonograph. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Michael, you were wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Michael Parks. And well, thank you, Skippy. Thank you. For and that's me. a you. that was a rare TV experience. Thank you. Oh, no, no, thanks. Susan, thank you. You're very my lovely. Pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Skippy Lowe. We've really been looking at Hollywood today. Thank you.